Greenwich Mean Time, 10 o'clock. It was 1989. Public radio had gained a substantial amount of the radio listening market from the commercial giants. So much so that the commercial networks banded together and declared war on their public counterparts. After several skirmishes, many public programmers were taken prisoner and held in security holding studios. In these studios, programmers were forced to produce programming and uplink under the harshest conditions. Yet, during the war, some programs proved too popular to die. The producers behind these programs were transferred to a link-up proof broadcast studio. Those programmers plotted to break out and obtain Arbitron ratings behind enemy lines. This is their story. Sit down, Group Captain Bakley. The Commercial Radio Alliance has been forced to spend time and manpower hunting down enemy programmers working behind the lines. Nice to know we're being listened to. This is not a time for levity. There will be no link-ups. Program director, sir. It is the sworn duty of every public radio programmer to link up with a satellite and broadcast their program behind enemy lines. The prisoners under your command have been too successful. For example, Michael Taylor, producer, actor, scriptwriter, mimic, Harris Deutsch, mime, puppeteer, ventriloquist. He even tried to use his puppets to take over the station upon his arrival. Then there's a woman, Sheila Gerber, actress, scriptwriter, temptress, her record reads capture, link up, solitary confinement, link up, and it must stop! Do you expect programmers to forget their duty? No. It is because you have all been so successful at carrying out your duty that we have placed you here. This is a new kind of studio and is incorporated to accommodate all security measures needed. With me, you will not be dealing with an ordinary program director, but one chosen from the Westwood One Radio Network. We have, in effect, put all of our rotten eggs into one basket. And we intend to watch this basket very close indeed. Oh. Sheila! Sheila! Oh, oh, it's so good to see somebody else here. Sheila, have you seen the cooler yet? Yes, step on anyone's toes and it's 20 days listening to the music of your life. Full blast! It's very large. I guess they're expecting a lot of business. Have you seen the other two from Kansas City? No, but I expect them to be here soon. Hey, um, Harris. You see where the program director's office is? Yeah! Do you see where the secretary's desk is? Sure! Do you see where the broadcast booth is? What are you getting at? There's a blind spot at the transmitter. Harris, you could sneak off and stick this cassette in the tape machine and play it over the commercial network, and the Mercers will never know. Come to think of it, try it now. You're smaller than me, Harris. You could do it. I can do no such thing! You'll do it, or I'll smash your stupid little face in! The things I get myself into. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! What are you doing by the transmitter? The tape ran out and I was gonna turn it over! You must ask permission. Oh, your program director. What were you doing by the transmitter? Uh, 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 the tape went out and I was going to turn it over. I do not believe you. Cooler, 20 days. The prisoner Taylor has been placed into your custody, Herr program director. He should be placed under the strictest security measures permanently. We have reason to believe that this prisoner has been the leader of a number of criminal link-ups and syndication deals. Public radio prisoners are the responsibility of the commercial radio networks, not the FCC. At present, this is true. We are turning him over for the moment to your custody. Taylor, if you link up or syndicate again and be caught, you will have your broadcast license taken away from you. Harris, have you always been a chump? No, Giorgio. It was something that you became by years of practice. Listen, Harris, you gotta learn not to trust that mink Sheila or that weeny beat Bakley. She had an idea on how to link up public programming on a commercial transmitter. She's out there and you're in here with only me and Penny Lee to keep you company. Things will get better. You are in the cooler! You are a loser! You have no natural resources of your own! How can things get better? They could play Perry Como. So they dumped you here, too. Oh, well, not exactly a voluntary patient. 
How many are here? In our sector, we have Gerber and Deutsch. The whole GMT operation. What did the FCC want with you? Well, they wanted to find out how I hooked the Pacifica deal. Oh, yeah, they gave you a hard time, huh? Not as hard a time as I plan on giving them. Hey, personal revenge is not a part of what we have to do here. Pete, it is my duty to harass, confound, and confuse the enemy to the best of my ability. That's what I intend to do. How? Oh. By broadcasting more public radio programs on a commercial network that had ever been broadcasted before. Not one or two or five, but 26. The entire Greenwich Mean Time first season. Yeah, smuggled them out on cassette tape in my underwear. Now we have the talent to do it, you said so yourself. The whole organization's here. Have you thought about the cost? I've thought about the humiliation if we just submit while all our comrades in public radio are being crucified by the commercial giants. Pete, Pete, let me in, it's Sheila. Come on in. Sheila, I'm glad you're here. We're having a meeting about my plans for Link Up. We're going to do exactly as the program director has asked us to do. What? What? Did the FCC brainwash you, Mike? What have they done to your spirit? Oh, Mike, once a brave comrade in the trenches, fighting for the cause that was right. And now look at you. Sheila. Yeah? Shut, Shut up. up. We're going to let them think we're asleep. Like they want us to, we are going to divert our energies into cataloging and organizing the record library. Meanwhile, we're going to link up. There's not going to be any half measures this time. How many programs this time? Twenty-six. Twenty-six? Mike, that's crazy! The entire run of Greenwich Mean Time. A quick look at the station layout will tell us that our studio and the listening studio are the closest to the transmitter. Uh, may I remind you that there's at least one foot of wall, soundproofing, and acoustical ceiling to go through. Not to mention lead pipes, electrical wiring, and air vents we'll have to deal with. We're gonna need an air vent man. She's right. And Harris is still in the cooler. Sheila, you're the scrounger. Now we're gonna need electrical wire, we're gonna need power packs, search protectors, playlists. I'll devise a signal system so perfect that if the Mercers come within 20 feet of either studio, we can shut down without a trace. Either studio? Both the listening studio and our studio holding tag will be equipped with the interception device. You're nuts, the both of you. The preparation for the transmitter interception was underway. Pete, the electrician, was trying to relay messages to Harris, who was still in the cooler, while Sheila, the scrounger, was trying to locate the materials for the needed device. Now by removing this piece of acoustical ceiling, we can get messages back and forth to Harris in the cooler. Just yell through the air vent and see if he answers. Oh, great! If the program director hears us, we'll be joining Harris in the cooler. Not to worry. Risk is all a part of what we have to do here. Harris! 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 My love. Harris! My love does it What is that distracting noise coming from the oven? Oh, and program director, it's probably rats caught in the central air oscillator. Well, I wish they would expire quietly. Mike, this isn't working. I yell, and I yell, and I can't seem to get through to Harris. I just hope Sheila's doing better with what we need from the electrician. Oh, you are good. I know, I know. Now, about the cable I want, are you going to give it to me? What? Oh, well, I, was, I was daydreaming for a moment. There. Are you going to give it to me? Oh, you've been asking that all afternoon. You know what I'm talking about. Give it to well, me. That'll be 11 times. The situations you get yourself into. You know damn good and well what I want. Give it to me right now. Okay, but you have to give it time to rest. It's not like he jumps up on command. How did Lassie get into this? It has been 20 days. It is time to release the prisoner Deutsch from the cooler. Yes, my program director. Assistant? Are you sure dying rats make that kind of racket? If you were caught in the central air oscillator, wouldn't you make the same hoarse cries for hell? Well, I hope they die soon. It's keeping me from my work. Harris, what was the cooler like? Damn, dark, cold, and dusty. I wouldn't have minded so much if they played Perry Como. But they didn't even spit Andrew's sisters or Rosemary Clooney. Harris. The worst part of the cooler was this awful screaming I kept hearing through the songs. It sounded like this. Harris! Harris! You heard that? Yes. A screaming voice calling you? It was nightmarish. That was me! <laughs> Pete, choking Harris to death is not going to get us anywhere. Right, let him go. He's our air vent man. Uh! Now, Harris, I want you to get into the air vents, and I want you to map out everything in regards to where we are and where the transmitter is. Got that? 
Remember, be as silent as a mouse, or I'll make sure you never have children. Oh. Why does Pete always pick on me? Because the word chap lights up on your forehead like a Christmas tree. Giorgio, what are you doing in the air vent? I'm your puppet, Harris. You figure it out. Now is not the time, and this is not the place. They sent you to do the dirty work, crawling through these air vents like a mouse, getting dirty and dusty, while all those pinheads laugh at you. When are you going to stop being a drip, Harris? Assistant? Are the rats in the air vents again? It seems that way, our program director. Of course, the exterminator, so we can get rid of the rats once and for all. No need for that. He's in the building. I'll go get him. Giorgio, are you trying to get me put back in the cooler? At least there, you didn't look like a rupee key from the Salvation Army. We had almost decent music to listen to, and there was plenty of end dust to play with. I wish you would stop playing with that stuff. It makes me woozy when you spray that stuff for five minutes at a time. That's the point, you imbecile. I wonder what room we're above now. The only problem with these air vent covers, they don't give you much room to see out of them. The exterminator is hooking the poison gas to the central air unit as we speak. Good. Make sure all the prisoners are evacuated from the studios immediately. The assistant is coming. Quick, close up the vent. But Harris is in there. Hurry or the plan is shot for good. Some signaling system. I, I am here to inform you that all prisoners are to be evacuated. What for? Large rats have been getting into the air vent. The exterminator is pumping poison gas into the central air system. You have 60 seconds on which to move yourselves to the lobby. <laughs> what in the blue places is this gas? It's obviously <laughs> something that will do us both grievous bodily harm. <laughs> you weedy! <laughs> we'll, we'll just have to see where it's coming from. Terrific, Harris! <laughs> Have you ever thought it might be deadly? No! Never! Mike, do you realize that Harris could be dying in the air vent? I just hope he makes that map on how to get to the transmitter. And the rabbi says, we'll throw the money in the air, and whatever God wants, he'll keep! <laughs> hey, sucker, what's on that paper you're playing with? It's the map Mike told me to make. The one on how to get to the transmitter by way of the air vents. Let me see that. <laughs> you know, Harris, if you connect a line between this line and this curve, you'll have a drumstick. Gee, Giorgio. You're right. I'm always right, Chuck. Now, if you draw a line back from here, see a tail. <laughs> now let's see what happens when you connect these lines with a grid and then color it in. <laughs> The program director has ordered all prisoners back to their cells. Now yeah, we better get Harris out of the air vent. Is that all you can draw? A happy face? No. It's a gopher with a happy face. Hey, listen. Larry Moe and Blackjack Glimps are calling you. <laughs> Harris! I thought you said that the exterminator would dispose of the rats in the air vent. There may be a plot of some kind that has to do with the air vents. Assistant! Yes, air program director. Go to the holding studios and inspect the premises for any sign of a breakout. Right away, my program director. <laughs> Is he all right? He's a bit pale. I wonder what he's laughing about. And God said, how did you die? And the man says, you see, I was in this refrigerator. <laughs> He's ripped! Hold on, Pete, it could be brain damage. He doesn't have the right equipment. Pete, what's that in Harris's breast pocket? It's a piece of paper or something. Dear God, let it be the air vent map. Close! It's a gopher with a happy face. Oh. Let me see that. Don't look now, but the program assistant is headed our way. Sheila, take care of Harris. I'm not his nursemaid. Sheila! Everybody up against the wall. We are here to search the premises, for we have reason to believe that there has been a link up attempt. From here? The, the transmitter's across the hall. And heavily guarded. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with this man? Look! The prisoner from the adjoining studio is running for the door. After him. <laughs> Get that man a cup of black coffee. During the next three weeks, 
The team feverishly worked to bring their plan to fruition. They set their watches for the zero hour. Meanwhile, zero hour comes to a small retired couple who have just moved to Nevada, Missouri. Hey, Orly, the oldest showcase is on. No good. I was getting tired of guns and roses. Ah, oh, Orly, you gotta move with the times. I kind of like Welcome to the Jungle. It's only because they used it in a Dirty Harry movie. Ah, oh, yeah. Everything is said in the listening studio. It showed you what it broadcasts first. Your speech from Lust for Glory. Couldn't have chosen better myself. Knew you were going to say that. Pete, how's everything coming with our studio interception hookup? Harris, has anyone ever told you you are an idiot? Sure, Giorgio told me that ten minutes ago. Well, thanks to you, I have to take the interface apart and wire it correctly. Don't red and green go together? Only at Christmas. I'm glad we moved to Nevada. Yeah, but I kind of miss Seymour, Indiana. Uh, life in the big city just got to be too much for me. Too much confusion. Never knew what the hell was going on. Here in Nevada, everything's simple. Uh, you used to listen to this song when you were at Kent State, didn't you? Yeah, before I transferred to Berkeley. Michael, where are you? Oh, jeez. I'm in the record library where anyone who wanted to could come in and see me. God, what's taking them so long? Zero, zero hour. Click the switch. Roger, over and out. Now the fun begins. You never did tell me why you transferred out of Kent State. Oh, these ROTC guys kept target shooting on campus. Well, that doesn't seem too bad. It is when they use the students. What is that? Why is that woman speaking over something in the air? Oh, Orly, take a Valium. They're just playing the long version. I hate to be the one to break the bad news to you, but listen to this. What in the hell is going on? The only thing I can think of is that Harris must have wired Sheila's interface the same way he wired ours, and it's causing a mix of sound instead of a complete override. Pete, in two words, fix it! Harris, get into the air bed. Crawl on over to the listening studio and give Sheila the following instructions. Open up the box and reconnect the red wires with each other and the green the same way. Got it? Sure, Pete. Back into the air vent. <laughs> Do you hear that assistant? Yes, Air Program Director. Do you know what that can be? Yeah. No, you imbecile. The prisoners are in the air vents again trying to somehow sabotage the station. Get all the guards to the hoarding studios at once. There you go again. Whenever Mike and Pete tell you to jump, you just say how high. Why is that weenies like you never learn to say no? Yes, we do. Then say it. Now is not the time. I've got to get to Sheila. I knew it. Suckers like you always lick the cheeks. What will it take to get you off my back? Just say no. No, I promise you there's no link-up activity going on in here. Honest. And he's telling the truth because I can vouch for him. I believe you. Search the studio! Sheila! Harris? Harris, is that you? What do you want? Sheila, I got bad news. The interface wasn't connected right. Oh, no. You're going to have to take the back of the interface and reconnect the red wires together and the green wires together. How did this happen? I thought the red and the green went together. Only at Christmas. That's what Pete said. Do you realize that I could get electrocuted? Unplug the device until you finish the rewiring. I don't know if I like the long version of something in the air. Orly, you're living in the past. No, I'm living in the Nevada, Missouri. Same thing. Every move you make, I'll be watching you. Oh, I'm glad old Green Teeth left. Pete, I've just had a thought. While Sheila's interface is down, shouldn't we be using ours? Bingo. Which show? Framing of the crew. Rap? You betcha. <laughs> Do you listen to that crap? The name Nothing more than talking and beat. I thought this was an oldies countdown. They said it was an oldies program. I got it, Harris. I'll switch on the box while you tell Pete and Mike what's going on. What is going on? I've got things perfectly under control here. Gotcha. Now turn it on.
Would you listen to this mess? I can't understand a word of it. Not a word of it. Relax, Orly. There's a groove to it somewhere. This never happened in Seymour, Indiana. Nothing ever happened in Nevada, Missouri. So what's the difference? There you go, running back to Pete and Mike. Harris, don't you have a backbone that you could call your own? Or did you donate it to the Salvation Army? Shut up, Giorgio. I've got work to do. I've only got one question for you. Giorgio, shut up. Are you always going to be a pedwack? I'm tired of you, Giorgio. I've had it. I don't like the look in your eye. I'm tired of you bad-mouthing me. It's all right, Harris. Calm down. I am your puppet, Harris. You created me. I'm going to kill you. I thought you said there were no signs of a link-up going on. Uh, there weren't any signs of tampering with the acoustical ceiling. Do you hear that something? That's too big to be a rat! Get back in the holding studio and search again! See what you did, Harris? I'm sorry, Giorgio. I guess I just lost my head. I'm scratched to pay off mine. Harris, could you, like, pick up my pieces before you lose them? Hey, I gotta get back to Pete and Mike to tell them about Sheila. I'll just put your pieces in my pocket and reassemble you later. Let's see, uh, I'll, I'll put, put your head in my back pocket. Yuck! There's pre-chewed bubblegum back here! Has it lost its flavor? What in the hell do you want now? There's one place we didn't love! Are you sure that you put the device where they can't find it? It's right above us in the acoustical ceiling where the air vent. What if Harris happens to come back? Don't worry. Harris doesn't know his way around the vent system yet. Uh -huh. I've timed it before. Mm -hmm. He won't be back for another... <laughs> Fraction of a second. Hi, guys. What's going on? Uh, <clears throat> I didn't know you were having company over. Arrest him! Arrest him! We're back in the air vent. Shake them higher, cried Aretha, the head cheerleader, excitedly, as she tried to contain her truly. What is this? Pornography on the air? What's this world coming to? Assistant! Yes, sir, program director. What is going on here? Taylor and Bakley have been arrested, sir. Of course they've been arrested, you sniveling toad. This is a prison camp! Listen to what's on the radio right now! Squad and their gym coach, Mrs. Williams. Public affairs programming? Wrong. Get out there and find the woman! I would, but they charge too much. Well, is Gerber? In the grocery store under baby food. Why? Never mind, I'll get her myself! Did you put my hands in a safe place? They're in my shoes. Never mind, you can give me new ones. Are we playing musical events or what? Well, I gotta tell Sheila about Pete and Mike. <laughs> Miss Gerber, what are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm filing records. How about if we revise the story? You're intercepting our transmitter and playing public programming on the air? Sounds plausible. What is that little device in your hands? It's a battery recharger. How about an interception device? That too. <laughs> Sheila, Mike and Pete have been, uh... Sorry, everybody seems to be throwing parties and forgetting to invite me! Arrest that man! Back in the air vents! You mercer pigs! Taking the airwaves away from the public and using them for your own profit! I spit on you! Do you hear me? I spit on you! Pigs abroad, will you? I... <laughs> Assistant, do you know where the advents lead? Uh, one is to the transmitter room, uh, one is to the cooler, another to the holding studio, and one is to that sublet, the psychiatrist's office next door. Yes, now, Miss Falcon, you said your fear of men began during your bar hopping period. Yeah, yeah, men are always trying to get the drop on me. <laughs> Sorry for dropping in on you. What is the meaning of this? Mr. Deutsch, I presume? Mm -hmm. Deutsch, cooler, 20 days. Sure. Things are looking up. Michael Taylor, you were told that if you were to link up once more and be caught, your broadcast license, please. Thank you. Hey there, what you doing, Orloff? Putting up for sale signs. What for? Moving out? Yep. Moving back to Seymour, Indiana. Your radio station's too weird. And 
And that was Greenwich Mean Time, a pre-recorded show produced and performed by Peter Bakley, Harris Deutsch, Sheila Gerber, and Michael Taylor. Show written by Michael Taylor. Announcer, Ed Hossey. Show produced in conjunction with Isolation Productions and Midcoast Radio Incorporated. Program distributed by the Pacifica Program Service. May God himself smile at your petunias. Good night. <laughs>